Hello and welcome. I call the channel The Jungle Nook and this is a video that is in a series that I'm putting together on how I'm caring for my tropical house plants and what I'm doing here is trying to recreate the conditions that they would be growing in in their natural habitat in their natural environment and I'm doing that to try to maximize the growth. I'm trying to get as much growth as fast as I can with really nice lush uh, foliage and there's several different pieces to the puzzle as to how I'm accomplishing this now we're going to talk about lighting fertilizing humidity um, temperature and of course the watering but first I I want to uh, try to explain to you how I define uh, flourishing versus surviving regarding plants i think we'd all agree that you know a plant that's flourishing is a healthy plant that's putting out lots of new growth with real nice uh real nice lush foliage now for me how i define a plant that's surviving um to me that's still a healthy plant that has beautiful foliage and is still growing and putting out new growth just at a much slower rate and the reason that i i do that with some of my plants keep them in the surviving mode is uh, for one perhaps they're not a plant that will get huge and large so i'll put that into a smaller pot i'll water it less frequently and by doing that you know i'm saving money on the uh, pot because the pot's smaller i'm saving money because it, it, it takes less soil and i'll water it less frequently it is also reducing my maintenance time but even plants that can get large putting them in a smaller pot and watering them a little less frequently uh, that will also control uh, how fast they grow and how large they can grow overall and that's beneficial if you have limited space or you don't want to spend as much time maintenancing the plant, watering it every day or almost every day. But for those plants that I do want to maximize their growth and uh, to the fullest potential, uh, I will, you know, first I start by trying to select plants that are healthy um, and that are, that are not root bound to begin with and uh also i look for new growth on the plant you know new foliage new leaves that are starting to open so i know that it's it's already in a growth mode and then i'll put them into a large pot actually sometimes a very large pot and i do that so that the the roots have more than enough room to grow um, and expand and fill that pot uh, with their natural root structure. Um, I don't like up-potting my pots because every time you up-pot them, you do run the, uh, the risk of uh, shocking them and stunting their growth for a while. And I make sure that I'm not using a topsoil in the pot. Regardless if I have plants inside or outside, I do not use topsoil. Topsoil is great in your gardens, your vegetable garden, your raised beds, or all that kind of stuff. But in a pot, I really like to use, and I would highly recommend using, a very fast-draining potting soil. Comprised of uh, mostly cocoa core or peat moss. And to that, I'll usually add... At, at a minimum, I'll add uh, some perlite, and sometimes I'll also add some orchid uh, potting mix, which is basically just tree bark. And that's my potting mix, so I know that it's it's not only fast draining, uh, but also that uh, that cocoa core and peat moss. I know it's re retaining moisture. It's not really waterlogged, but it's retaining uh, a steady supply of moisture 
and also the uh, as that moisture is getting absorbed into the peat moss or cocoa core, it's also absorbing and holding in that fertilizer to make it all readily available for the roots to support that nice, lush, beautiful growth on top of the soil. But also never recommend that you use a pot that does not have its own drainage as well. You do want your pot to physically drain water out of it so that that excess water can drain out of the pot. Now, when talking about fertilizing, uh, I like to use a slow release fertilizer. You know, those little, those little pellets, the, uh, the granular fertilizer. I like to do that because then I don't gotta worry about missing and fertilizing, you know, missing one of the applications. That stuff usually is good for about six months. And about every six months, I will, uh, I will add some more of that granular fertilizer to the pot. But also, on top of that, in the spring and again in, uh, in, in early summer, and maybe even sometimes in late summer, I'll also give it a liquid fertilizer. Uh, I have a 10, 10, 10 here that I use, but I'll dilute that down to a 5, 5, 5. And I'll just do that while the plant's uh, in its most robust growing phase, just to give it, give it a little extra. I specifically do that if I am watering my plants if those are the plants that I'm watering almost every day. Now with the lighting, I provide a lot of uh, supplemental lighting and I'll talk more about that towards the end of the video, what kind of lighting I'm using. But when I'm trying to hit to maximize the growth of the plants, I use a lot of supplemental lighting and what I do is I I am increasing the amount of time that the plant is receiving that light 10 to 12 hours a day. And I'm doing that because when the plant is actually receiving light, that's when it's actually engaging in photosynthesis. Now, that's why the fertilizing is very important and the daily watering if you're really trying to maximize the growth because the plant also needs nutrients and moisture while it's engaging in photosynthesis. And with that prolonged exposure to the light and all those extra hours of it engaging in photosynthesis, it's consuming more water because it's actively growing longer. And by me watering almost daily like I do, you know, the water's constantly uh, evaporating out of the pot and it's increasing the humidity in the room. In order to really maximize your plant's growth, uh, besides the watering, the lighting, and the nutrients, there's other things it needs in order to be really uh, growing at its, at its full potential. Like, for instance, the humidity level actually only needs to be around 50%. And here in this room, my humidity stays between 40 and 50%. Really, uh, 50, 60%, you know, that's, that's perfect for tropical plants. Um, and they're growing quite well at that humidity level. Um, but also temperature. Um, even though they come from a tropical rainforest, they really don't like it to be too hot. But a humidity level around 50% and a temperature between 68 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit, um, that is where the plant grows the best. Uh, below 65 and above 85, the plant actually can become stressed and grow a little bit slower. Same with the humidity. Uh, being below 40. Um, and for some plants, uh, the humidity being above 70 also will slow the growth. But high humidity um, is not actually always good for the plants. It can uh, promote pests and fungus and mildews and stuff, mold, which also is not healthy for you or for your home. 
So it's actually really nice that in reality, a humidity level between, you know, 40 to 50 percent and a temperature between 68 and 85 is ideal. And also, just to be aware, the thicker the leaf of a plant, um, the lower the humidity it can handle. That's part of the reason why ferns, you know, require slightly higher humidity and, and have a tendency to dry out more. That real thin leaf, it's able to dry out more at, at a low humidity. And I water a little bit differently than how you might be used to hearing how people water. And that is, I water my plants almost every day. I water my plants about five to 12 days in a row. And then I usually, I'm leaving for the weekend. But that last piece of the puzzle, how I water, you do not have to do that to have really nice, healthy, beautiful plants. But if you are going to water like that, I would highly recommend you watch all of the videos in this series in their entirety so you understand how and why I'm doing it and how I'm able to do it without getting root rot. Uh, one thing is, even though I'm watering almost every day, they're really not getting much more water than what they would be getting if I was watering several times a week or several times a month. I'm just doing a lot of um, frequent light waterings. And if I happen to notice water starting to come out of the bottom of the pot, that's when I stop for several days. And then when I leave for that weekend, uh, nothing gets watered for, you know, two or three days or even longer if needed for the soil to, to dry out a little bit. And then I, I go back to my watering regimen. And that is actually a big part out of how I'm getting really fast, robust growth. But again, it's just a piece to the puzzle. So I had a bunch of you asking me about the lighting. I talked about it briefly, but uh, I had, had a few questions. Now, these, this lighting that I got, it's, uh, they're not LEDs. They're just fluorescent tubes. They are T5 tubes, T5 grow tubes. And what that means is the T just means it's a tube. And the five is the size of the tube. Uh, that's how you identify the size of the, of the tube. It's a T5. And you need a fixture that corresponds with that that they'll fit into. The fixtures really don't matter. I mean, it, it matters that the bulbs or the tubes fit into the fixture, but I bought these right on Walmart. It was the bulbs and the fixture included. These have four tubes, they're four foot long, and uh, they're about 150 to $170 a piece, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly. And they are 65, or was it 6,400 K. The number and that letter K, the K is the Kelvin. And that number represents what type of light it's, is coming out of it, as far as whether or not it's a warm light or a cool light. And the 6400K, when you see that, you'll know that that light spectrum that's coming out of there really closely resembles uh, natural daylight. And it also happens to have a uh, light spectrum that is great for tropical plants and most house plants. It won't burn your plants. And um, also you can't grow really full sun plants under it unless you have that light really close. Um, I'm not an expert with the lighting. I, I did a lot of research on it. I'm a simple person. <laughs> Uh, I didn't retain a lot of the information. I just, you know, I found that you really don't need expensive, high-powered grow lights uh, for tropical plants and most of your house plants or your fish tanks. So they're just uh, basically standard bulbs. They're 6400K, which is the light spectrum that has different wavelengths that are required for plant growth and the 6400 not only looks the best 
but it provides the wavelengths that the plants require. Now, I was asked about the uh, Kelvins, which the Kelvins, I believe what that is, is that is the intensity at which the light is right where the plant is. You know, it's how intense the light actually is hitting the plant. And you can adjust that by how close you have the plants to the lights. Now, what I did, I don't have a, a, a Kelvin meter. I don't, I really wasn't concerned because I just kept adding more lights. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't really give you more information, but you know, a light that says 6400K is suitable for house plants. And the plants, you know, if you look at the plants, their leaves are growing towards the light. So as the plants get bigger and they get closer to the light, they're getting more Kelvin. But I like to have my lights in the center of the room so all my plants grow that way. So when I'm walking around the house, my plants are all pretty much facing me. Um, and you don't need to use fluorescent tubes. That's what I used. Uh, I, I think the color looks slightly better than uh, LEDs. And again, the LEDs are a uh, little more expensive in the short term, but in the long term, they actually can pay for themselves because of the reduced cost involved with the electric. Um, Geez, I really hope that helped with the lighting. Um, and I have other supplemental lighting too. Um, if you look over here, this this is a real dark corner. Here, I have I have another light right here. This is an actual LED glow light. I don't like the pinks or the purples or the blues that come out of them. But these leaves were all going to start turning yellow if I didn't have that light there. Um, part of the reason why this is a dark corner is as my plants are growing, you know, they're providing, you know, they're, they're making shade. They're, uh, you know, they're blocking the light from other plants. Something else I do want to let you guys know. I got a lot of comments about how you guys think my plants are beautiful. Like, wow, you don't even have a single yellow leaf. Well, I water my plants almost every day. I see my plants every day. I remove those yellow leaves. I don't like how they look, but also those leaves, if you leave them on there to continue to uh, wither away and rot and decay, that can, uh, that can help cause pests. Um, also, um, sometimes the plant will be struggling to try to keep a, a, a leaf alive and it's not an efficient use of, uh, of the plant's energy and resources. Um, something else I wanna just mention to you is too, is on that other video where I was showing you how I polish my leaves to get them nice and shiny with the uh, the neem oil. Well, thank you for whoever that was. I forget your name uh, for letting you know for giving me some information. Some things that I found out was neem oil is toxic to people. It is uh, an eco friendly product, a natural product from the neem tree, but. It can be toxic to humans, so you should be wearing a glove when you apply this stuff. Um, also, I forgot to mention in the last video, uh, where I, I, well, not the last video, but the video where I put that neem oil on, it's recommended you only do that about every three weeks because it is an oil and it can clog the pores in the leaves and prevent the leaves from breathing. Okay, that's what the product recommends if you're using it to shine your leaves. I, however, make sure I do not do it more than about once every two, three months, just to be on the safe side. Um, so yeah, there's more videos to follow. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do something like a, um, I don't know, a plant talks or something where once in a while I'll just talk about, about whatever hap is happening to be going on here. It won't actually be part of the series where I'm 
explaining how I'm growing my uh, tropical plants exclusively. But I know that a lot of you guys uh, are new to the channel because of that plant care video, the uh, tropical house plants tips and tricks. You're new to the channel. So you may not have watched or you're not interested in the, uh, the stuff about the fish tanks where periodically I give a little bit of information about myself or the, uh, the channel um, and even the, even the plants. Um, so if you want me to do like a plant talks video or something like that to get you guys caught up on what's going on, who I am, what my background is, what the goals here are, I can do that instead of, as you know, well, you, you may never watch all the other videos. And this way, all those little pieces of information, I can just throw it in in something real quick. And you never know, maybe that plant talks um, will turn into some kind of a, a, a regular thing. But the first one will basically be a meet and greet for me and for the channel. Uh, let me know if you're interested in that and I'll put something like that together and I'll be sure to give you some new tips, maybe show you some plants that you haven't seen. I got some other rooms here. Um, yeah, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. And as always, if I can't answer a question, I'll definitely let you know that I, I don't know. Um, so yeah, have a good night and stay tuned for the next video.